Will Goldstein here from thekingscourt.com and please subscribe if you like the videos. Um, the name of this video is The Baptism of the Holy Spirit and Our Anointing by the Divine Light. You could also add another subtitle to that, Metaphysics of Illumination Part 2. I'm trying to give it an idea of what illumination really is. Okay, and it's associated with anointing. So, um, I'm going to start off with, and I'm going to do a lot of paraphrasing because it will save time. So, in Luke 3, 21 to 22, um, people were getting baptized, and Jesus was also getting baptized. And uh, he, while well, this was about to happen, he was praying, and the heavens were opened up, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in, in a bodily form of a dove. And then a voice came from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son, for you I am well pleased. So it's interesting that the, he's, Jesus got baptized and the, uh, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of doves, so the Holy Spirit can take whatever form it wants to take. It was, I think that was just because it was uh, God wanted to, the people to see this and wanted to see this dove descending from heaven and then hearing the voice coming down from heaven. So it was a public proclamation about Jesus's baptism. So immediately after that he goes into, he's, he really hasn't had a ministry up until then or not much of one. He was, just, he was a carpenter and maybe a little bit with his mother or with a wine, but he basically he's just getting ready to start his ministry. He's probably about 30 years old. And um, so it says right off the bat that after he was baptized, he was full of the Spirit. Now, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit. That's in, uh, so that's right after that. And he returned from Jordan, and he was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness. So he's about ready to be tempted. He goes out there for 40 days, and the devil's out there trying to tempt him. And he's, he's hungry, and the devil tells him, if you're the Son of God, you know, tell the stone to become bread. And Jesus says, um, man shall not live by bread alone. So the devil, that's trick number one. He's trying to deceive him. And then he says, the, the, the devil says to him, he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he says, I will give you all this domain cities and for it has been handed over to me and I can give it to, to whomever I want. So first of all, <laughs> He says it's been handed over to me, and Jesus doesn't doesn't dispute that. He accepts that. So that should tell you a lot about what's happening in the world today um, with the, this world being handed over to the devil. Now, God is in the world, and God is is still has ultimate control, but there's a lot of power that's in the And the devil has a lot of power that's working through this world. And so... Uh, therefore, if you worship me, so he's asking uh, Jesus to worship him, uh, it'll be yours. In other words, I will give you this world. Well, Jesus is going to have this world without, without that. So um, Jesus answered, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So he's telling him that's what he should do, but obviously he's not. <laughs> So then the devil brings him up to the pinnacle and the temple, and um, he says, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Um, he says, the angels are, uh, he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you. So in other words, and then he goes on to say, uh, on their hands, they will lift you up so that you do not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus replies, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So the whole idea of this is that Jesus is being tempted and, um, you know, he's trying. The devil is right there, right off the bat when he sees that Jesus is entering his ministry. I mean, it's like day one. He's like, he's like Jesus is getting baptized and boom, the devil is, is there, you know, to already make some kind of deal with, with Jesus to stop him because he, he can see that, that Jesus is really trouble for the devil. And indeed he is. So then I'm going on to, um, 
So after that, he goes, after Jesus leaves the wilderness, he goes into Nazareth, and he enters the synagogue and on the Sabbath. And when he gets there, um, he opens up the scroll of Isaiah to do his reading. And um, this is what he read. And it's, like I said, it's from Isaiah. This I will read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Then he rolls up the scroll and sits down, and the people are all staring at him, and then he, lo he looks at them and he says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. So I'm gonna kind of review this a little bit. First of all, it says, because he anointed me, Christos means anointed. So, and what did he anoint, what did God anoint Christ to do? Well, to preach the good news to the poor. So, the gospel. Um, and to proclaim release to captives. Well, the, the captives are exactly that. You know, they're in some, some sort of bondage. So he's, he's come to set them free from bondage. So, and recovery of sight to the blind. Well, that could be physical recovery of sight. That could be spiritual recovery of sight, um, which is part of what illumination is all about. Um, and uh, to set free those who are oppressed. So, you know, this world is full of oppression. And, you know, as long as we're in this world, there'll be tribulation, there'll be crying, there'll be tears, there'll be pain, there'll be disease, there'll be suffering. But in the world to come, um, that will all be free from that. And to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. So what he's basically doing, he said, this is the favorable year of the, of the Lord, because Isaiah had prophesied this several hundred years before, and today, now, he's saying, you are seeing this fulfilled. In other words, I'm the guy that Isaiah was talking about. All right, so, um, now we're going to jump forward. I know this guy's like sort of a big jump, but um, I'm jumping forward to after because this is all about anointing. It's all about the Holy Spirit. So um, uh, I'm jumping forward to after the cross and after you know the, the resur after the resurrection, and the the scene is basically um, Jesus appearing to the disciples. So um, he's there and he, he appears to the disciples and he, and he began to teach them. Um, and he was giving orders um, by the Holy Spirit to the apostles. And he, basically he, would, he, had, he had already done his suffering and he had been teaching them about things and uh, concerning uh, what was to happen and many convincing proofs you know they had seen him he had appeared to them over a period of 40 days so he had been there and he had been there again so that they they were very well convinced that this is truly jesus that that um who would you know went to the cross so um and their their master so he was speaking to them regarding um the kingdom of, of god and then he says this to him. He, he commands them not to leave Jerusalem, to, but to wait for what the, the Father had promised, which he said, you heard of from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit many days from now. So he's saying wait because something new is going to happen. In other words, they had been with him all this time. They had been under his discipleship. They had watched him go to the cross. Now they've seen him risen. And still they really didn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. So um, he, he's telling them wait because that's going to happen. So then Pentecost comes. Okay. So um, now when the day of Pentecost came um, and they all they were all together in one place and a, suddenly a, a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven so where did it, it's a first of all there's sound 
a violent rushing wind. So it was, it was, it was audible to everyone that was there, and it was violent. So it was pretty <laughs> intense, I would imagine, or even loud um, rushing wind that came from heaven, and it filled the whole place where they were sitting. So they're going, "Whoa, this is this is straight from heaven." Then he saw that you know, and. Um, then tongues that look like fire. So this is, notice that this is, that tongues look like fire. Well, when you look at fire, fire is like, they even call it tongues of fire, you know, the, the, the flame goes up and it kind of looks like tongues. And this is resting on them. So this is, this is a reference to the divine light. So this appeared to, uh, that it looked to, they looked on it, it looked like fire to them, and it distributed upon them a tongue on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak. So this fire, this light was resting on them and they were filled. So the being filled with the Holy Spirit is associated with this fire that was resting on them. So when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives us spiritual illumination. Okay, and I'll get in a lot more of that as I go on with this study, but I'm just kind of giving you the idea that even at Pentecost, that this is, and this I would call the anointing, about, you know, it's usually called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you could call it the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit is a transformation that happens after water baptism okay where they where they actually received this illumination so and then then you know it, it, i could i'm not going to get into all the gifts right now that i i'm sure i'll probably do that later but the whole idea is that there is this anointing so you know that and i'm just going to quickly go through this so then right after this they they were in in jerusalem and um a lot of people were there from every nation and there was a crowd around them and they were all be bewildered and watching them because they were speaking in tongues. So I will say a little bit about speaking in tongues. So the speaking in tongues at this time, they were just speaking in some language. They didn't even know what they were saying, but the people that were there from other people, other places around the world were listening to them. Okay, and they were hearing the gospel preached in their own language. So that, that is one aspect of speaking in tongues because there's different aspects of speaking in tongues. And you know, some of the people that were there, they weren't really even necessarily believing in it. They said, these people look like they're full of wine. <laughs> so the point is that power is coming down from heaven associated with this light and this sound, okay, that was coming down and, and it, it, it illuminated them. And this was, this was the result that was happening. So then Peter goes out and um, he's looking at him and he gives a response because some of these people thought he was drunk. And he said, it, and it shall be in the last days that I will pour out my spirit. So this is a manifestation of the pour it on all on spirit on all mankind. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. So notice he says in the last days. So here we are in the last days. So this should be happening to us. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will have dreams. I will pour out my spirit in those days. They will prophesy, and they'll just, you know, paraphrasing again, I will display wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. So look at what's all happening in the world today. <laughs> you know, climate change and... Um, blood fire and vapor of smoke the sun will be will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood so a prophecy of the end times which we might be getting very near before the great and glorious day of the lord and it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the lord will be saved so no matter what's happening in the world that we come in, all the, and the things that are happening in the world, if you all of a sudden decide that, hey, you know, what this guy Will Goldstein is telling you is true, you know, and you call, you see it all happening, you call on the name of the Lord, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
So then I just like to switch to kind of wrapping this up. But, but uh, in John 14, 12, it says, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and I will and will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So what does he say? That we're going to do the same works that he was doing and what are the works that he was doing? I described them to you in the, in the anointing when he read from uh, the uh, Isaiah in the scroll. And we're supposedly going to do even greater things than, than these. So, so I guess that they, at, at, at the end of the day, that we, we, we need to be open to the fact that, you know, there's in, in Bible, in church history, there's a lot of different variations in Christianity, okay? And some variations in creed, they're all sticking to the basic truth of, you know, the scriptures, for, or at least <laughs> primarily they are. There's a lot of possible dissent over what certain scriptures mean, um, and the, the granted that can definitely cause a lot of, of, of gray areas. But there are certain parts of Christianity historically that have gravitated towards certain aspects of it. And so this is all about illumination. So the sector of the of, of the Christ, of Christianity that would possibly be um, has been more in touch with that. Let's just say is the Orthodox Church. Uh, but there, so um, as this goes on, I'm going to kind of continue with this. And I, but I'm. I think the next one I'm going to do is more on the Old Testament so that you can see the metaphysics of light. So I'm trying to give you the metaphysics of light. And in the Old Testament, I can bring out a, a lot of different scriptures, you know, where you can see how this is all playing. And then I'll probably go into the New Testament and other scriptures and even things that Jesus said, some of the disciples that might make you see. Because in, in Protestant, um, in the Reformation, you know, mysticism... And this aspect of illumination was kind of set <laughs> aside. And it's, in my opinion, that's extremely unfortunate because it's a, a part, because the Holy Spirit is, a, is associated with that, that power and that, and that um, divine light. And the, in the Bible, it's actually called the Son of Righteousness, and that's an S-U-N. So that, that Holy Spirit is there and present and manifest himself inside us in our spiritual lives with the sun s-u-n of righteousness which uh, probably some pastors you know who aren't really familiar with this uh, may, may say this is <laughs> off the wall but check it out you know it's, it's very much a part of of uh, especially the ortho orthodox christianity so um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I will probably give part three coming up at some time, not too distant. And then again, this is associated with the metaphysics of illumination. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>